So I'm also, I've also been the facilitator for group number seven. Um, and Braddy Cat is here to represent. Braddy Cat, maybe you can wave real quick. Um, I would recommend at some point that you press speaker view. You can do that uh, in the top right on your screen. So this, um, this Zoom function is slightly different from what we were in before, before we were in a webinar function where you could only see the speakers. Right now, we're just in a Zoom room. We're all here together. It's like sitting in a big circle. Um, just that there's, on my screen, there's four pages of people, so I can't see everyone. Um, so what we'll do is, um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to mute, um, mute yourselves. And when you have a question, just put that in the chat and Marin and I will, will keep track of, of it. Um, and you can also put your question directly in the chat if you prefer for us to read it out instead of, um, or for it to be captured because we may not be able to get to all the questions, um, you know, verbally. Um, so that's it about, about etiquette. Also in general, just, you know, let's be civil, let's be, um, let's use this as an opportunity to spread the love and, um, you know, challenge is part of love, but um, aggression and um, offense isn't. So um, we definitely welcome your challenges and your, you know, your questions right. to, to challenge our ideas. So um, there will be, so our agenda for now is there will be two presentations, one from group number seven, and in a moment, everyone will introduce themselves um, from the group, the presenters. Uh, group number seven was uh, the Strengthening Our Neighborhoods group. And then there's a group, uh, there's a presentation from the support camps group, what they came up with. And then we will have ample time for questions from you. So, um, I'm going to invite and I'm going to invite Braddy Cat to introduce herself. So um, tell us a little bit about you and then share one moment memory or insight that you've had during this cultural direction setting process. Hi, everyone. I am Braddy Cat. Um, I started burning in 2013. It's my second year on the placement team. I camp on fire with the vomiting sparrows. Um, I guess through the cultural direction setting team, my best insight is that sometimes the best answer is one that's not obvious and takes lots of digging and investigating and really investigative work. And I've really enjoyed that process, working with an amazing team of just burners in all sorts of areas around the city. It's been a pleasure doing it. Thanks, Braddy Cat. Um, so next, let's go with Jeremy, aka Quick Draw. I'm gonna unmute. Um, Marin, can you unmute Jeremy? And spotlighting would be great. Yes. Can you see me? Am I being heard? <laughs> yes, you are being heard. Okay. Um, I am Quick Draw. Um, I have been a temple builder since 2011 and have had an art support camp uh, for working artists during the event, um, I guess since 2014. And we have a mutant vehicle. It's um, the Epiphany and Company Jewel Box. You may have seen it around, but um, we uh, uh, provide support to many of the best photographers at Burning Man. And we're really um, uh, pleased to be able to support a, 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 a quiet and safe and reliably consistent working environment for them so they can be out in the playa getting the images that we so depend on um, for the, the community and for the people that um, aren't uh, on the playa with us every year. Um, my Biggest aha moment during the cultural direction setting uh, 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 process was to gain an understanding of how different uh, art support camps and work support camps and 
um, the other formats are in the way they view the neighborhoods uh, from uh, most of the theme camp um, citizens. And uh, we view our, our, our responsibility somewhat differently, um, but one really important thing that we do on every block that we live on is um, we're the consumers. <laughs> we're the ones that stagger back to camp and love to stop in at your place for a beer or some recreation, go for a dance. So. Um, the, the idea of, uh, of neighborhood consumerism um, um, as, a, as a palliative for exhaustion. Thank you. And then we also have Black Beauty with us, um, who, is, who is part of Group 4, who won't be presenting here, but they're, they're also part of the whole neighborhood conversation, and uh, he's mostly here to answer questions. So, Black Beauty. Tell yeah. us something about you and a moment of cultural direction setting. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Black Beauty. Uh, I've been burning since 2012 with Boom Boom Womb. And I've uh, been on the placement team the last three years, but I'm taking this year off. Uh, but I'm still pretty involved, as um, Simone mentioned, with the CDS group number four, which is the placement, pro excuse me, the placement process group. Um, and I think my memory or insight that's been the most powerful is just um, kind of personally, like I see, I see so much potential in this uh, process uh, that's been laid out over the last year and a half, I think, or maybe more. Um, it just has, uh, in my opinion, like a lot of really potential, good potential to help our communities. And I'm excited to, to continue that work and, and see where it goes. I think it's it's been going great so far and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this process. Thank you. Thank you to all three of you. Um, so Braddy Cat, take it away for us. Yeah, give me one moment to share my screen. And screen. Yeah. We see you. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Loading. So I'm talking about strengthening our neighborhoods. Um, but what does that really mean? So we're a community that values communal effort. Without other residents, we sit alone in the desert or in our house. <laughs> We aspire towards a city where camps are eager to collaborate with their neighbors and improve their neighborhoods. When burners talk about neighborliness, we talk about affiliation, affiliations between people who feel belonging to a specific area of the city and the practice of a shared culture. Um, neighbors care for each other and use their relationships to acculturate, mentor, incubate, and support each other. We wanted to create a network of neighbors that coordinate layouts, share resources, organize events, and take ownership of their streets. Um, we wanted to create formal and informal ways of facilitating these connections. Um, I'll, pre I'll be presenting four um, of our findings. Our first one, our neighborhood forums. Um, we're really excited about this one. A neighborhood forum is a camp willing to facilitate community connection and growth through hosting a space that's open and inviting to all. We want these spaces to help communities and neighbors help themselves, rather than relying on placement or rangers to address issues or build connections. These forums should be willing to host a bulletin board as part of their integral frontage, along with hosting neighborhood events like meet and greets, mixers, walking tours of the city, talks. Um, we're also encouraging these forums to host spaces off playa there's many existing um, social media groups already in, in reality. You can work off these or make your own. To become a neighborhood forum, any camp that's a placed camp can apply. If this is something that interests you, please feel free to email placement. Uh, we are requesting that every neighborhood forum have a debrief with a placer after to hear about your experience. The acculturation plan. If some of you have filled out your questionnaire, there were now questions about acculturation within it. We wanted to see acculturation as being critical to the city and have that reflected with place camps. 
this plan is similar to a leave no trace plan and there's an acculturation contact accountable for implementing these measures. CSS or the camp survey squad will also be looking at how camps integrate these plans into their existing framework. When camps develop unique and effective approaches to acculturation, we'd love to highlight these examples on our website and let them be utilized for the camp advisory and mentorship program. The camp survey squad. Um, last year, I was the volunteer coordinator for the camp survey squad, and we have a new um, newly formed leadership team as well. We formed in 2018 with only 30 volunteers. In 2019, um, it pretty much blew up to over 120 volunteers and we got to survey a thousand camps. Many of our volunteers were other camp leads, open campers, and just great citizens of Black Rock City. This year, we're really trying to reach our goal to survey every theme camp. So we'd love for you to volunteer. Our shifts last about four hours and we send you all over the city and hopefully you get to explore a new neighborhood. Some of our goals of CSS are to gather and understand your experience as theme camps and to capture the reality of what's happening in real time in Black Rock City. We wanna interact with more camps, collect feedback, and help placement connect with camps needing support or guidance on Playa. Um, a CSS volunteer will hopefully visit your camp this year and be asking questions about interactivity, your experience with placement, frontage, and a lot more. We want to encourage volunteers and camps to see the micro and macro level that they exist in, both their experience as camps and the larger neighborhood they belong in. So we'd love for you to volunteer. The last thing we wanted is we want to encourage and expand camp layout. Um, we want it to be easier to find examples of layouts on our website and clarify what a good and bad layout design mean. In addition, we're recommending establishing a peer layout review team. There's already um, placement has solicited reviewers. This is a great pilot program, but though the number of volunteers is really small and if this feedback seems um, useful, we'd love to expand this and offer peer to peer support for you and your community. And we have some questions we'd love for you to answer. I think Simone will insert a chat to a Google Doc if you want to type in um, type in your answers. I'd love to bring them back to the group and we'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Braddy Cat. Um, so I just put a Google Doc in the in the chat. And there are four questions, uh, the four questions that Braddy Cat showed for you and we would love to have your answers in there. So um, click on that doc and just type away. And while we're doing that, so we're not taking questions for Braddy Cat right now. We're gonna hear Jeremy's presentation about support camps and then we'll do, we'll open it up for questions. So um, while you go into your Google Notes, uh, Google Doc, I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. A uh, little tech glitch here. Can I be heard? You can be heard. Um, okay, can start talking. Yeah. All right. Well, mm -hmm. I've got I'm a gonna, slide. Hold on one sec. I, I'm going to need um, Marin to share. Marin, can you share the screen instead? I'm, I'm having some trouble here. Um, share the. I'm going to. I'm going to this presentation here. Can you share that? Uh, let's see. Um, and then still spotlight Jeremy. Let's see. I, I can spotlight Jeremy and share my screen. I've never gone through one of these before, so just uh, yeah, just click on share screen at the bottom, and then it gives you an option, and you just do all desktop. Um. Okay. 
Let's see. And just make it full yeah. screen. Um, I'm sorry. New with this? I oh, there we are. A couple hours ago. <laughs> oh. How did that? I'm sorry. No worries. So while we're figuring this out, just keep writing your answers in the in the Google Doc. Is it this one? The Google right here. Nope, that's the doc. No, it's the last link I shared to you privately. Okay, thank you. Oh no, yeah, I can't pull it up for some reason. Hmm. On the chat. Maybe Braddy Cat can share it. Aha. Should we, should we ask Braddy Cat to share it? Aha. Right here. Got it? Yes. Okay. But then full screen. Full screen. All right. And. Yeah. Okay. That should work. That works. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for this last minute. <laughs> change okay Jeremy take it away all right um, we'll use some of the slides and skip some of the slides uh, mostly want to talk to you about the conversations we've had about uh, being more effective members of the neighborhoods and really bringing what we do in our support camps uh, into the public sphere um, and so why don't we go to the first slide and that we're really looking to share the, the uh, effectiveness of art support camps in the community, work supports in the community, and mutant vehicle support camps in the community. A lot of times um, we are not the most attractive people on the block and um, there's been, you know, there, we, we're often confused with um, convenience camps because um, quite often nobody's around and we're not offering a lot of interactivity. Um, so the, um, uh, in the theme camp community, a lot of people don't understand what support camp means and how that plays into um, concern about not contributing to the life of the neighborhood, where we really want to be contributing to the life of the neighborhood, even though most often we're out there in the greater playa doing what we were there to do. Um, so uh, you can see the questions we discussed, uh, discussing ways that we can be better citizens. Next slide, please. What's a support camp? Um, quite often, it's not as simple as it seems. Um, the art support camp that I am in uh, is mostly people who have worked on large art projects uh, prior to the build, but were principally there to support people who are working during the event. Um, many art support camps are there just for one art piece that was built during build week, and then they've got someplace to retreat to, but have no bandwidth to create interactivity, but they've got a lot of bandwidth to go visit your camp and um, participate in your interactivity. Work support camps are a very different animal. These are people that keep Black Rock City chugging day to day. These are people that are working Artica, that are working heavy equipment, that are working um, in art support or artery. Um, these are people that have different tasks that are really important out there every day. So move on. Um, and I think this is pretty self-explanatory based on what we all know here. Um, we um, are being very conscious not to be detractors from uh, the energy on the, in the neighborhoods. Um, and we wanna be very conscious that we're presenting a good face to the neighborhoods. Um, there are several support camps that have had in the, uh, uh, our 
RV walls in the past, and we've got solutions that we're working on to try to prevent that in the future. Uh, next. I didn't have anything to do with putting this deck together. Um, so I will not take credit for putting the photograph of myself working on my art car in the center, but there I am. Click. Okay. Um, speaks for itself. We are um, looking for ways to make, uh, make ourselves more involved in the life of the community. Art support camps and work support camps are going to be asked to provide signage to explain who they are and what they do to passers-by and to our neighbors. Um, in our particular circumstance of my camp of Epiphany and Company, um, we want to discourage inquiries because we need our artists to be sleeping most of the time that people are out wondering. Uh, so we may not be doing signage, but uh, oh. most art support camps and work support yeah, camps. Will. The other time, but for the art cars, they should have one for this. Next, please. Can can everybody who's not presenting please mute themselves? Skip. Next. So we there we go. Um, Skip. Um, go ahead, please. Next. Next. So a lot of the work that we've been doing has been oriented towards better integrating the support camps into the community. And um, We've been focusing on several elements. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. The low hanging fruit is, is talking to people, putting up signs, encouraging support camps to uh, obstruct uh, vehicle walls and doing outreach and welcoming people in for presentations. Next slide. Um, this is the most interesting thing that really uh, came out of our, uh, our work. Um, the idea that many support camps would really work well if we are um, embedded within other camps. That uh, a host larger camp or village might incorporate um, a support camp within it. It would remain its own identity, but would be away from the street, not having street frontage, nor having responsibility for uh, interactivity. Next, please. We're calling that a hybrid camp, and we're working with uh, placement to find ways to do that and to do some, uh, do some pairing. Next. In our survey, we asked what people thought about the idea of hybrid camps, of placing uh, support camps within um, uh, theme camps, and it was very well received. Next. I think we're done. Well, maybe you can just <clears throat> explain those points about the placement questionnaire. The last slide. Okay, can you go back to the slide for me? All right, we're recommending that the placement questionnaire be used as a tool to orient um, the support camp community to be better citizens by in, uh, uh, recommending the kind of uh, um, solutions I've been discussing and also to see what kind of hybrid camps they might fit into if there was interest in making that work. Um, the placement questionnaire has been very shallow in getting into uh, multiple purposes. Uh, for instance, my own camp, we've got two art cars, um, we've got um, a, a level of interactivity, but our 
raison d'etre is to provide a home for working artists during the build. So none of that nuance was there within the placement questionnaire and it will be in the future. And very practically, that will mean instead of having to choose one category, you can tick multiple boxes of what you're providing and show like the, you know, the range of the range of things as Jeremy mentioned right now. Thank you. So thank you, Jeremy. Marin, you can stop sharing your screen. Um, now we want to open it up to questions from you. Um, you can ask any of the, you know, two or three questions about strengthening our neighborhoods, uh, support camps, um, and you can do so by either um, putting your name in the chat and then we'll call on you. We'll do our best to call on you. Um, let's see, is there also a raise hand function? I'm not sure we have that here. So let's just uh, put the name or the question in the chat and then we'll, we'll call on you. So there are a few questions in the chat already. <clears throat> I'm just gonna start from the earlier question from Missy, Missy Pissy. Um, I think that one got answered, right? What does it mean to be an art support camp? Um, is there more clarification that you have? Let's see, can you unmute yourself? Is she still here? Missy Pissy? No? Okay, maybe it was answered. Um, from Denver, is the neighborhood forum a proposed, just a proposed idea? Is that just another part of the placement questionnaire? Um, and I answered this a bit in the chat. It's not in the questionnaire at the moment. We are hoping to put this into action this year um, and maybe doing this through the placement newsletter and also having camps email in if you'd want to participate. And we might reach out to some camps as well. We're still working out some of the details on this proposal. Cool. Um, curious about how solutions, how to manage RV walls. Um, I guess we spoke a little bit to that by pairing, pairing them up. Another one is the layouts. Do you want to say something about that, Braddy Cat? Yeah, I was going to say the layout team is, uh, especially with our peer review proposal, um, we envision this as camps coming together and sharing their full layout, not just frontages, and letting the community offer input. Um, and this goes be, I think, hearing input from a peer versus just from placement can also help camps do this. Um, also added involvement with the camp mentorship program and working with them. Uh, um, yeah, Jeremy, did you want to say something there? Oh, hold on, you mute it. Yeah. Within the support camp um, uh, paradigm, um, that's where the I was a driving force behind the idea of going to a real hybrid of having a um, an alley entering the center of a block that is surrounded by theme camp or village. Um, quite often the um, support necessary to be on Playa for uh, two weeks, or in my case, I often three, um, is, it, it, it can be obnoxious if left untended. So the idea is to try to build that into the heart of a, of a block um, where it is less of a block to anybody. Less of an obstruction. And then there's a question about how does that work with large art cars on K? It's pretty much a desert out there, nasty, nastily dusty, and all around just free camping. Have, uh, well, have any of the groups talked about that? Yes. Um, one of the participants in uh, group three uh, is one of those uh, K camping large art cars that wants to be alone um, and that's why they are out on the edge of the city. Um, they tend to um, have different sets of needs 
and often uh, are working on their art cars uh, in such a way that it's not really pleasant within the neighborhoods. Um, that's why they tend to choose to be out on the borders or in other ways that can be completely contained within another block. So here's a question along those lines, what's the difference between a, will, a village and a hybrid camp? Well, the hybrid camp uh, concept really goes to the idea of a camp that has a very specific purpose being hosted within a theme camp or a camp that has resources it could share to support the purpose of the support camp um, and to house the support camp. Um, in terms of, uh, of the temple building, uh, we've been exploring the idea of, of being hosted by a larger uh, theme camp or village within that unit and being able to access their infrastructure. Uh, because quite often, by the time we get done with the temple, um, people are in no mind to build their own infrastructure for a, a decent camp in the, in, in the city. So um, how does it differ from the village in that in, in a village, typically each support, each camp within that village plays a role in the ecosystem, contributing to the life of the neighborhood, where the art support camp or the support camp that's being hosted in a hybrid is less of a direct supporter into that neighborhood. And I've also just got whispered in my ear, a village is currently the best way to do a hybrid camp, but each sub camp would have to fill out their own questionnaire as a camp in a village. Um, <clears throat> let's see what other questions we have. Let me just go through here. Um, is there a consideration of creating um, art support village? Anybody want to take that? Can, what does that mean? Or like, can, what's the, can you clarify the question? I cannot. It was written in the chat, but... Um, Actually, I can clarify it. That was my question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So my question was, um, for example, I saw somebody else. We're a smaller group. We do most of our stuff off Playa, and those contributors want to come in and thinking of it from the standpoint of sharing resources too. Um, for example, if we wanted to do water or create a kitchen area um, to share or share a gray water container, those types of things. Um, that as our small group, it isn't the best use of that resource, but in a larger group, like in a, a village type scenario, that sharing those resources um, would serve two purposes. We would get the resource that we need, and then somebody else who's the same size as us would get that same type of resource. So that's kind of what I was thinking. No, I could maybe speak to that a little bit. Cool. Uh, so this is Black Beauty with the um, Group 4 team. And I think related to your question uh, is something that we're trying to tackle, which is how can we facilitate um, camps knowing their neighbors so that um, they can share resources and things like, like that. I think that's one of the biggest requests we get. Um, from theme camps, from all placed camps. And so I, um, that's a big part of Group 4's objective is to find a way that can facilitate um, that type of information sharing um, to make it easier for camps to plan with their neighbors. Thank you. Great, thank you, appreciate that. And thanks for coming on. It was nice to see a, a different face here. <laughs> yeah, if any of you want to ask their questions, um, you can just unmute yourself and, and ask it. Um, are there other people who want to, let's take a few more live questions maybe. Are there people who haven't written in yet or want to ask their written in question directly? Please do so now. Hi, uh, yeah, I was uh, uh, wondering about, um, 
one of the things that that we've struggled with is is you know there's a certain amount of community building that you can do once you get to playa but uh and we've loved our neighbors and we've you know made friends with them over the week and and uh, for uh, build week and whatever but um what I'd like to be able to do is try and build that community off playa before we get there so we know who we're going to be you know who we're going to be hanging out with we can make friends with them we can talk to them about logistics and events and things like that um and I know that that requires a, a degree of uh, earliness for the placement team that isn't currently available. But um, I was wondering if you guys could talk to maybe the possibility of, of the, the knowing more about your neighborhood earlier and also what you've done to overcome the current difficulties with like not knowing who you're going to be around um, and how you've overcome that to build a neighborhood. I can speak to this a little bit. Um, I think so we can't change the timeline for when you find out when you get placed. But one thing we really wanted to do is um, have these forums facilitate off play connection. You don't know exactly where you're placed, but there are already sector groups. And I would encourage these forums to break off and form avenue groups or street groups. Um, there are ways to find who you're near. And I would hope places and plate not places. I would hope camps and these forums help facilitate some of those connections happening off playa. Did that help answer the question? Yeah, and Black Beauty, is there more you want to say? Yeah, I I think Freddy Cat said it fairly well. And again, as I mentioned um, with the previous question, that's something that we are trying to address. We know that that's like. A, um, again, the, one of the most requested things is like, how can we better know our neighbors before we get to the playa? And I think that's a really important piece of this uh, puzzle and making sure that we continue to do it right. So that is something that the CDS group four is working on along with some of these other um, groups like um, strengthening our neighborhoods group. Um, we don't have, um, you know, we don't have like a, a solution that's ready to to roll out. Uh, that's part of this year's work effort. But I think uh, in the very short term, we should have something that it, it will work for everybody. Great, thank you. Ian, do you want to go next? Ian Industrial? Yeah, so I had a question about villages. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, does each camp within a village uh, fill out its own questionnaire or does the village uh, have its own placement of their village? Each camp within a village should also be submitting out what we're calling a CIV camp within a village. Um, your village will also submit a questionnaire along with all the individual camps. This should can't help camps in the future if you ever want to break away from your village. We have a record of who you are and what you've been doing. So, yes. So, uh, part of the reason I, I asked that question is I've noticed uh, a lot of villages tend to have, like, very sparse interactivity around their borders. Uh, you know, there will be a couple you know, really interactive camps and then a lot of small camps within a village on the outside of it uh, that don't really seem to be doing anything. And I mean, is there, does Camp Survey Squad come to each uh, camp within a village? I actually uh, think And that. is there any way for, for those camps to be like, you know, confirm that they're actually doing their interactivity? Um, for one, I think with the new interactivity that's been happening, um, the way we look at camps is changing, and this is something we're all thinking about. Um, I would encourage you to write in our Google Doc that um, suggestion for the Camp Survey Squad. It's something I'd love to bring back to the leadership team. And I hope that answers the question a little bit. But I can also say that was discussed, you know, and also the fact that sometimes um, convenience camps or plug and play camps hide within villages. We talked about that. And um, if you, you know, if you're really interested and want to dive in more um, in the next breakout group, 
the one about participation and convenience camping, they'll, they'll address that more. So I'm going to go back to the written questions. Um, there was a question about um, any suggestions for hybrid camps for the host in dealing with challenging house guests in regards to host camp culture and participation. I think part of that is maybe an accul acculturation question. Um, Brad, Cad, do you want to say something about that? And then maybe Jeremy, if you if you guys discuss that, you can say something too. Can you repeat the question one more time? So the question was, you know, imagining hybrid camps. Um, mm -hmm. What are suggestions for the host camp in dealing with challenging house guests, um, you know, in regards to host camp culture and participation? Um, so I would hope that, so is this specifically about hybrid camps and house guests? Like what does a house guest mean? Well. Abigail, do you want to clarify that yourself? If not, what I understand here is, you know, if you as a as a theme camp invite an art support camp to be, you know, get under your wing, like mm -hmm. how do you how do you create a common culture? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm asking. Um, I've had experience before where maybe during build or something, um, we've hosted art camps and it created a dissonance in camp culture with so many new camp members coming in and not necessarily knowing whether or not like um, culture was being represented by the art camp or, or by other campers when there's lack of clarity as to who's in your camp. And so then what are some of the best ways to like really have a cohesive camp culture even with your house guests? I know how I do it in my home, but it's a little different when you're doing it uh, on Playa with an organization and, and so on and so forth. It becomes more of a professional relationship almost and what are some good ways to to deal with that in a way that still honors uh, the host cam culture. Um, I guess I could speak from what like personally I would do and and, just and something something that a, a place placement team can completely be involved in that because the 10 principles and all that we do is something that we're very, very fond of. And we will be more than happy to set up times to show up and, and lead, lead everyone that's in your camp in that sort of thing. This is machine from the placement team, by the way, if you haven't, <laughs> um, we haven't done this so far, but when you speak, maybe just say who you are and, and what's your affiliation. So we're, we're a little bit more relatable here. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Machine <laughs> from the placement team. I have been doing this since 2004. I do the, I am the flagging manager and I do some of the cleanup and help out with the placement team. And thanks for jumping in here. Thanks, Machine. It's always great to see you. And I, I can I can share a little um, insight here too. So my camp isn't a village, but we work in pods. So at some point we, we got too big and um, it, w it became unmanageable. And last year we adopted a whole new pod, which you could almost say was a little camp, like a, a group of 15 people. And, you know, we had a process for deciding how, 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 like, if these people were a good fit, we had conversations with them. We talked to them about who we are, what we stand for. So, you know, a lot is in the prep. Um, and then they, they got integrated. We had a, we have an admin team where they're representatives from all the pods. And so their admin team lead was um, involved in, in all of our preparation and, you know, was responsible to do that acculturation for for their little pod okay i think that's the part i was confused on i wasn't sure if camps would know ahead of time who their um who their guests would be so that they would have adequate time to really communicate with them and and develop a healthy communication channel between the two mm, that makes sense but that that helps provide clarity thank you cool um, so there's a question, I don't know who that is for, but the question says, uh, is there a way to note special needs 
for us, if a bar or something that plays loud music is next to us, makes it really difficult to talk to people, which is essential to providing our service. Um, that's Mobility Camp. Maybe some of the placers can take this, or Jeremy, did you talk about that in your group? Just opening it up for anyone who has an insight on that. There, or Machine can talk. Okay. I mean, being involved in the center camp process, that is, that is really unique. And part of placing camps in that plaza is a balance between interactivity of what your neighbors are doing and what you're doing. Part of what your neighbors do actually give you the opportunity of being able to be seen. So there is a give and take of noise and or traffic to keep people coming by your camp as in mobilities, they need traffic to keep their process going just as much as the people next door need traffic. Then people next door keep the traffic for mobility and on and on and on and on to keep that dynamic in the center camp plaza. Um, I can also say that there is a place in the questionnaire where you can put request for who you want to be around or what you would not like to be around. Um, so there is a, there's something ready to go for you. Or email placement. Okay, let's go to our next question then. Um, are there plans to mix to mix support camps um, through the theme camp areas or separate areas for support camps. Okay, that was that was my question. This is Claire. I'm with Hi, Claire. Camp, Hi Camp Puddletown Panorama. Uh, we are the ultimate hybrid because we are a mutant vehicle work support and art support camp rolled into into one. I asked this question because. I think it was earlier this year, placement sent out some questionnaires to those that are uh, camp leads. Um, and one of them was asking our preference, and I just realized what a god awful mess my office is, sorry. Um, what, <laughs> whether we had preference for the potential for sort of villages or neighborhoods of art support camps to be created and, um, and work support camp, neighborhoods for work support camps. And of course, I found myself like, well, I don't know, because we're all three. So I wondered if that was going anywhere. We've always been sort of, we're a very small camp um, and we're all old time burners. And, you know, we, we, we've all been around the block many, many times. And we end up in between theme camps, which is fine by us. That's, that's okay most of the time. It's been a couple of problems. But I'm, I'm really curious about where that question might have gone about the neighbor, the creating neighborhoods of, of like type camps. Um, I think it's great input. Um, I would say placement's goal is we are trying to create really active, vibrant, and different streets. Um, so we often would integrate art support camps in with theme camps. Um, having all art support camps might make a really dark looking street. And so we like to add in other camps, which might be where a hybrid camp can come in. Um, and then you can have a neighbor near you who you know and love and want to be part of their interactivity. Um, so I would say a pod of art support camps, would that be just for your specific needs and those needs of art support around you to share resources? Well, no, you guys asked me the question in that survey you sent me was how would we feel about neighborhoods? That were, and one of the, the reasons I think behind, if I remember behind the art support camp idea was that um, we could share resources and somebody else mentioned that earlier on uh, in this discussion. Um, so I was just curious whether that idea, which has come from you, 
from whatever information you gathered in your survey, where that has gone, if, if anywhere? The um, group three that dealt with the support camps um, debated on this question quite a bit, actually. Um, in a sense, we discussed this in terms of, do we want to ghettoize the workers that are um, making the city work and create uh, ghettos of uh, dead space in the city? Um, there were very few support camp leads that really were interested in being remote. The only ones that were um, tended to be the larger mutant vehicle uh, camps, which are naturally being placed remotely. Um, so I, I think it's a, a really interesting topic. I think that the only way that's really going to work, uh, Claire, is that if, if, if um, clusters form um, of smaller support camps that bind together, share resources, and decide they want to camp together, creating their Yeah, well, that's, that's fine by me. I, I don't like the idea of ghettoizing either, which is why I brought up the follow-up question as to where that particular idea had gone. Thanks. Can I jump in here? Hi, everyone. Um, oh, hi. I just wanted to say, I think, uh, just so you know how we do support camps right now, for art support camps, we do generally try to see if they want to be by their art piece. Uh, so we'll put them, you know, anywhere from Esplanade to E and not, not any further so that, you know, art projects that have to maintain their camps or maintain their projects are close enough to the playa where they can get to them easily. Uh, and also figuring out exactly what sector their art piece uh, may go. We work pretty closely with the art department to determine that, uh, you know, kind of in June, July, when you're there figuring out the map for all the art. Um, the other thing I would say too is that, you know, we actually for several years there were art projects that were all like the regional effigies and things like that. Um, they actually clustered together and took over entire block of Black Rock City. Uh, but that was really self-organized. It wasn't something that we uh, did as placement. It's not something that, you know, it was sort of a couple of those projects uh, really stepped up and said, hey, let's actually share resources, share generators, share water, things like that. Um, and it worked out well. I mean, you know, one person's ghetto is another person's uh, favorite neighborhood because those are the people that they're around and want to be around. So I don't know that we want to use that terminology, but um, ultimately I think if camps for whatever reason want to be together, we try to honor that. You just have to make sure that you uh, coordinate ahead of time and uh, actually want to be together uh, before making, you know, us make that decision for you. So um, hopefully that explains a little bit more about how we cluster things or not cluster things. Um, also one other thing to note, we, uh, the art support camps have generally wanted to be closer to the artery as well. So 7.30 and 4.30 tend to have larger pods of art support camps, whether or not they want to be around each other just by mere proximity and needing to have space for them. I see a bunch of questions around, um, <clears throat> or anecdotes even, around loud camps being next to camps that need a little bit more quiet. Um, can the placement team maybe say a little bit, li little bit of something around your process of picking that, choosing that, and what people can do if they really don't want to be placed to a loud camp? So there is to reiterate a section in the questionnaire to request your um, any sound requests you have or camps you want to be by. Um, I would also want to tie this back into a neighborhood forum of if you are having something in your neighborhood that your forum could host a space for you in the camp to talk. And a reminder that if something really isn't going well, please contact your placer and we're here to help you. And for placing loud camps, we do ask camps how loud their sound system is. There are ordinances around the city and hopefully they try to stay within them. Um, it doesn't always happen and we can't be everywhere to know. And the only way to know that this is happening is to talk to placement and even your CSS volunteer when they come by as well. 
So let's actually use that as a cue. There are some questions for CSS Predicat. Like, what are what are the CSS goals? What does placement get out of CSS? Oh, I love this question. Um, our goals, well, first and foremost, we want to connect, we want to collect data from camps. We want to know about your experience, what your in front, what your frontage is like, what your interactivity is. Um, placers can't be everywhere at once. So these CSS volunteers help visit our camps. Um, we also want to help connect camps with placers real time. So if you need to see your placer for anything and your volunteer comes by, have them take a note and we can hopefully make that connection a lot sooner than the way it's happening. Um, let me get my other things. So we really want to be consultants for camps. Um, this loop goes both ways. Uh, camps want to give feedback for placement. This is an option. And placement also gets feedback from camps. Let's see. Level, do you want to say more about this too? Um, I think the biggest question that I've heard is, um, what are you, what are you going to do with this information? What are you, why are you here? Are you going to, are you spies? Um, we are doing our best to <laughs> make sure that uh, these aren't spies. I mean, honestly, I said earlier, we had 120 volunteers last year. Uh, by and large, there were other theme camp leads who I don't think are trying to snitch on each other. Really what they're trying to do is uh, meet other people in the community that are doing similar work. Um, and I think for the most part, most people found it to be a really rewarding experience because uh, honestly, a lot of them said, I walked into camps that I never would have walked into in the first place because I had my own preconceived notions about who they are, what they are, and realized that there's fantastic people in every single camp. And so, um, you know, I think we, already hear about uh, camps that might be treading the line of like, maybe they're a little bit plug and play, or maybe they're doing something that isn't in the spirit of the 10 principles. So, um, you know, should one of these camps or baseball volunteers come across that, that is just another point of information for us. I don't think they're the judge and jury, um, you know, really they're just there to, uh, like Rangers in Black Rock City, um, have a little bit more focus on camps because Rangers are, you know, all over the playa. So, um, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I mean, I think, I don't know if anyone in this room volunteered for that experience, but ultimately we're just trying to say, Hey, people are doing great things. Let's see what those great things are. Let's take a couple pictures, take a couple more notes, um, give people credit where credit is due. And in the rare occasion that there is something funky, uh, it's another point of information, uh, and not the only source. So, um, hopefully that clarifies for you all. I think I'd like to add too that we really wanted this to be a force to really help highlight camps that are doing it right. Like so many camps do so many good things and we can't see it all. And CSS is a great way to capture what is going right in our city. So um, I think we've touched on some of these other questions, Braddy Cat, but um, House placement influenced by the results of the CSS survey? Will the survey be incorporated in the future um, into placement and standing decisions? Um, yeah, I think maybe there's a little bit more that, that could be said. We, um, we do connect this data to your camp. I wouldn't say it's there to hurt or harm your camp. I call it, it's a reference point. Um, the photos are amazing. We love to hear about the experiences someone else had in your camp. Um, a lot of placement is getting data from different sources to hear about your experience. And this is another outlet to know how camps did on Playa. I see a question here. It says, how does CSS decide which camps to visit? Um, you know, our goal is really to cover every single camp in Black Rock City, so, or at least every single place camp, um, starting with every single placed theme camp and village. Uh, there's more clearly expected out of placement from uh, theme camps and villages rather than an art support camp because those folks are working on their art and, or immune vehicle because they might be roaming around the playa somewhere. Um, so ultimately, we do want to visit every camp at least once. Uh, it's basically partly around I mean, our limitations are around the workforce that we have, or workforce, the volunteer force. So, um, 
yeah, I think we're, we're trying to cover every camp. Last year, we did 1,000. The year before, we did 200. So already we had increased by five times. And so next year, you know, if we have roughly 2,000 camps in Black Rock City, uh, hopefully we will cover that ground. We're also limited a little bit by the resources that we have. We uh, collect that data through tablets and, you know, the Burning Man Project only has so many to pass around and lend to the city. So um, that said, we're doing our best to ramp up and get it all uh, set to go. Um, but it's the in an ideal world, we're visiting camps when interactivity is happening. Um, so that schedule that you put into um, the placement questionnaire is helpful. We know that it's often too early to say definitively, but that gives us a guide, uh, a guideline around when to visit camps. So if you're doing something only on Tuesday, we won't show up on Thursday expecting something to happen. Um, and yeah, we want to cover, uh, I think generally our team, at least the existing placement team, as with most people in Black Rock City, you know, Esplanade through D, you're kind of visit, passing through all the time. So I think we want to make a concerted effort to go from the back of the city forward. Um, that, and so not to ignore those camps too, because those are the ones that sometimes we don't have the most information about. I also saw we even have some of our leadership members here. If they want to introduce themselves, now would be a great time. I think we have Maestro here. Hey. You want to? Hey, I'm Maestra. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Maestra. Um, so we'll be sending out more information on how you can volunteer. And we do try to talk to the camp lead or someone close as the camp lead. Um, so if maybe not the newest person in your camp is the best for the CSS volunteer to talk to, but even an experienced camp member would be great. Oh, great. Right. Um, there was a question here still about how the information is aggregated and are there ratings, quantitative data, or is it mostly qualitative descriptions and photos? Mostly descriptions and photos. Um, we are still working on our questions last year. They were pretty simple. Um, what do you like about your neighborhood? What, how was your placement this year? Any feedback for placers? So it's, we're trying to be as qualitative as we can be. Yeah, and that's, that's a rating for the camp to give to placement, not for placement to assess about a camp. So it's really one directional there. Um, I know folks have been asking in general about feedback and hopefully that cultural direction setting conversation we had earlier in the presentation in the plenary pointed out, you know, we will be doing more around giving camps direct feedback, especially themed camps and villages. Again, support camps um, aren't expected to have interactivity in camp. Uh, a lot of them do. A lot of them are like, I set up a nice little bar and that's really a, a cherry on top type of thing rather than an expectation, whereas theme camps are really there to provide interactivity. Um, and so uh, we are revising those questions and looking at how many um, or which ones we want to keep, which ones. Uh, I think there's a sentiment from our volunteers that it could have been more specific um, and could have been more useful uh, exactly what things we want to be specific and useful around, I think we're still figuring out. So um, that is something we want to be very transparent about and share with folks so that you're not just caught off guard and have these volunteers with tablets walk in asking you questions that you didn't even think about beforehand. So uh, stay tuned. It'll definitely be presented in the placement newsletter when that does get firmed up. So this question, maybe the person came in late and didn't hear the full presentation, but just to reiterate, um, so um, the means for strengthening our neighborhood that we talked about in group number seven were A, neighborhood forums as aggregation places for, for neighborhoods to, to meet and to have a bulletin board to share information and to maybe meet up as neighbors, have a block party. You know, some neighborhoods are already doing these things. Um, we talked about acculturation, how to strengthen acculturation, acculturation in camps specifically. Um, we talked about um, improving layouts um, and, and the idea of the layout boards, um, putting more info on the website, but also um, 
you know, having kind of a, a voluntary board to, uh, to review layouts. And then there's uh, the CSS, the Camp Survey Squad, as just, uh, you know, kind of a, a mingling, co-mingling, gathering information, but also sharing information about what's happening. So those are the things that, that were, were talked about. And if people have ideas what, what other things could be done for strengthening our neighborhoods, then we would love to hear about them. Brady Cat, is there something you wanted to say? No. So let's look at what other questions we have back to our other document where we ca capture them. Could villages consider the option of rotating art projects to allow a different art support group each year? Interesting suggestion. Jeremy, do you want to comment on that? I like the idea. Um, my initial reaction though is back to a, a previous conversation that was held in this forum about um, how do we deal with different cultures that are trying to merge. And um, it's a tough one on the playa and it's a challenge and it's, it's about being a good citizen. Um, I know that from, from my personal experience that if I found a uh, hybrid situation that we felt was a good fit, we'd want to hold on to it. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, another question here is, can you share what discussions are taking place about supporting camps with sustainability efforts, such as camps wanting to share sustainable infrastructure systems but aren't part of other villages? Is that part of discussion for how to help place camps on shared sustainable infrastructure needs or give camps greater advance notice for placement to make those arrangements with other neighbors? I think that is a Black Beauty question. You get it? Sorry, could you say the question again? Oh, I see it right here. Yeah, the one selected on the dock. Yeah. It's basically about knowing your neighbors in advance so you can share yeah. resources. Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, that's definitely something um, we want to facilitate and want to find a way to, um, to get camps that information. Currently, the only process is through villaging. Um, we know that that can be hard for camps that um, maybe want to work with their neighbors once they get to Playa. Maybe they haven't met them yet or uh, they want to try something new. So um, I think, yeah, I think there'll be more to come from our group very shortly. Um, just a quick sort of side anecdote is uh, the play, the, the, Group number four has been trailing some of the other CDS discussions just by virtue of being more process oriented. Um, and so I think once we sync with some of the other groups and get feedback from them on some of the ideas we're working with, then uh, we'll be better equipped to implement. Uh, it's unlikely we'll have um, a full uh, solution for this uh, cycle, but I think very shortly we'll be able to share more more information. Thanks, Black Beauty. Um, here's a question from somebody uh, from a mutant vehicle camp. Lisa, are you here? Do you want to ask your own question? Otherwise, I will do that for you. Sure. Um, hi. Okay. Hi. Um, so we've been part of larger theme camps for a number of years and we decided this year we're going to split off and be our own mutant vehicle support camp. Um, but we love being in the city uh, rather than being out in the, in the, you know, in the burbs. And so I'm looking for tips on what would, what would lean the decision in our direction uh, to be really good neighbors and, and, and help in that regard while still knowing that we're really focused on the mutant vehicles. So you talked before about, for instance, signage. Is there anything in addition to signage that, that we might consider um, and things like that? It's strange being the first year that I'm looking at the application, not as a theme camp lead, but as a, as a vehicle support lead because it's completely different paradigm, I think. 
Anybody from the placement team can address that? I can try to speak to that a little bit. Um, yeah, so I think um, one of the things that we've tried to do with camps is, um, uh, well, specifically for mutant vehicle camps, uh, oftentimes mutant vehicle camps are placed towards the exterior of the city for just logistical reasons. I know that may not be the case for every mutant vehicle camp, um, but um, some don't fit in the streets. Um, so that's important to note. And if that's not the case for your camp, then um, I think there are options to work with placement uh, and put specific requests in the uh, questionnaire. If there's um, streets or blocks um, that you prefer, we um, as a team, I think do a pretty good job of accommodating requests. Um, obviously not everybody's request can be matched perfectly, but um, I think the entire team does, uh, does pay a lot of attention to each of the camps requests. So it's something that you can try as well. Um, I guess I would also add that um, across the board, um, Lighting and interactive frontages are always really important to our team, to, to Black Rock City. Um, understanding that you're a mutant vehicle focused camp, um, you know, that's, that's different than a theme camp, but I think, you know, having lights uh, for when it's dark uh, or having a sign like we've talked about is something that can definitely um, help liven up the, the block. So those are some things that that you can do as a mutant vehicle camp. Thank you very much. Great, I think we've answered all the questions so far. Are there any other comments, um, you know, remarks that you wanna make? Feel free to unmute yourself and do so. Or any other questions you wanna ask? Abigail is asking a question about, uh, she missed an intro to the signs. Would the signs for projects include descriptions of the projects? I'll take it. Um, yes. Uh, not only descriptions of the project, but hopefully um, specific times when talks could be given by the artists or um, the, the, the the people who are, are making up the support camp, uh, instructing them, you know, how it is we're effective in the community, how we're building a better city. Um, quite often, art, um, uh, art builders uh, want to do their talks out in the, on the playa at their art piece, but uh, I think that this process that group three studying the support camps uh, has come to encourage us doing that in the neighborhood so that the signage might say specifically, we, we plan on doing a presentation every morning at 11 uh, to talk to you about what that great thing we did out there on the playa is and what it means to us and et cetera, et cetera. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, and actually, there was a great challenge here from inventory. Do you want to um, speak that out loud or you want me to read it? <clears throat> um, just double checking that you can actually hear me. Yep. Great. Loud and clear. Um, so my feedback was you, you listed the things that had been talked about so far in this forum for strengthening neighborhoods, which brief recap, it was um, camps hosting neighborhood forums, discussions of camp acculturation, uh, putting layouts on the website, and then the camp survey squad. And my feedback was that those things seem like they're missing or ignoring a lot of the things that theme camp organizers are asking for. Um, Specifically, none of those four things really are focused on building community between camps in a neighborhood. 
And what the theme camp organizers are asking for is things that accomplish that. Uh, the most frequent one every single time is, please, can you just tell us who we're camped next to before we get there so that we can talk to them and start being friends with them before we get there. Uh, and then the second is we're all looking for ways for not only our camp, but rando camp down the street who might not be involved in symposiums like this to try to integrate into the neighborhood in a way that does not involve, oh yeah, I'm gonna put more work on my camp by hosting this giant forum, or I'm gonna put more work on myself as a theme camp lead by being part of the survey squad. So is, is there anything that we've got that's like actually focused on building community between camps in a way where it doesn't just hit the people who had extra time to volunteer before they get there, but it also collects the people who show up and draws them into that neighborhood. Uh, I'm gonna let people talk about that for a minute. I also wanna say that I didn't just bring the challenge to be negative. I do have some suggestions, but I wanna open the floor. Um, thank you for bringing this up. I think it's a really great topic and it's something we also spoke a lot about in our group. I think this is probably a dual answer between me and Black Beauty's group. I know I can answer from my experience um, and what I just proposed to you. So um, our group was really focusing on community-led um, camp to camp connection. Um, how can camps do this without placement doing it for them? So we, um, whether or not you have to be the forum, but someone else who maybe has the bandwidth, I'm sure maybe this a forum is not for your camp. There might be other camps really interested in this can help facilitate that as well. Yasmin? Well, I just want to clarify. It seems like there's a confusion with what we're proposing a forum to be um, rather than, you know, a forum for some people maybe sparks the idea of a gigantic forum where lots of people participate. Whereas before we called those uh, neighborhood council camps and then the name didn't land right with some of the leadership. But the idea was really just um, to be a, a reference camp in the neighborhood, you know, like kind of your, um, I want to know more about my neighborhood, your info spot, like your bullet, there's a bulletin board where camps in the neighborhood can post events. Um, and, and it's more kind of, of an emergent thing. It's not a big forum that needs to be hosted. It's not an event. It's more like a drop-in place. And maybe you can say a little more about that, Brady Cat. Um, yeah, I could also, Black Beauty, do you want to hop in here too, if you'd like, or? Yeah, yeah, I can speak a little bit to this as well. I think um, it's, it's a really good challenge. And again, I, I have, I've said this a couple times already, it's something that people ask for a lot. So you're not the only one to, to bring this challenge to the placement team. Um, I think just some historical frame of reference, um, there's reasons why the map and information about neighbors is not shared publicly. Um, most, one of the most notable is, is we want to protect some of the camps that are um, uh, maybe targeted by law enforcement or other individuals looking to do harm. Um, there's lots of other reasons why I think we've resisted releasing uh, maps or, or neighbor information, but I think um, having been working with the CDS group, we're trying to come to a happy medium where um, I think there is some amount of information or maybe even some, um, some small um, effort put into our, um, our systems and our processes that could facilitate just some type of connection within the camps on a block or camps that share borders. And so it's not necessarily a publicly um, uh, shared information, but something like um, connecting them via email, um, things like that. Um, we already do stuff like that. So um, right now it's a more manual process. And again, this is something we want to like do for everybody and we would need to automate somehow because that is quite a bit of work for the placement team. Um, but, you know, for something very specific, uh, like power, like, um, water, you know, 
um, things like that, you can reach to, reach out to placement and ask. Um, and as long as your neighbor has also agreed to share information, then we can facilitate that. Right now, it's just a one-off, but hopefully it will be a uh, more automated thing for everyone. Thanks. Um, I'd love to hear your ideas inventory and we have about four minutes left and then some appreciations and then we got to wrap up for the second breakout. Uh, so I'll go quickly then. Um, one of the things that forms community is repeated interactions over time. Another one of the things that forms community and identity is the organic development of traditions. So like um, anyone who camps in the 730 neighborhood, you know about the yodeling, right? You just, that's one of our traditions. No one started that. That was an organic kind of ground up thing. And one camp did it, another camp adopted it. And it's, it's now just something that you get when you come to our neighborhood. If it's your first time as a camp in that neighborhood, you go, what on earth is going on? And then somebody explains it to you. And then you think, oh, okay. And then the next morning, you know what it is and you get to explain it to somebody else. So this, this body of tradition or this body of knowledge, it would be really, really easy to challenge each neighborhood, each like couple sets of blocks to come up with something for their block that could spread. Or that when neighborhoods get those sorts of things to encourage them to just have like a wiki page somewhere where they record what you might see in neighborhood X. Um, another thing that helps you form those repeated interactions over time. Most people don't know that they have the ability on their placement app to request a camp near specific camps, but not share a border with them or in, in some way be tied to them with an infrastructure. If there was a way to say, you know, I camped in such and such a neighborhood last year and I really like camps one, two, three, and I'd love to be near them again. If those camps get placed within about a block and a half of each other over time, that forms the cornerstone of the community, at least for that area. So those are kind of two quick things that we could do. I'm sure there are millions of other ideas. Thank you. Um, and Jovi highlighted some ideas of <clears throat> what you're doing. Can you, can you speak those in for us real quick? I sure can. Hi, Wheat Thin from Jovi, coffee to your me. Um, we've been in and around the nine o'clock plaza for about seven years now, I think, on and off. And we just formed a, a TCO group of people in and around the nine o'clock plaza. And we're gonna build community because we're taking what we do in our camp outside now. So we've had a mid-year retreat of TCOs around nine o'clock. We're forming a private uh, group of the TCOs in the area to coordinate and talk about things. Pre-Playa, we're going to do what we can to coordinate and support each other on everything from tickets to vehicle passes to hauling to transpo to gear. Um, we have a, a group that's going to talk about the build week, what we can do to help each other during build week, everything from barn raising to we're planning on a nine, excuse me, a uh, a potluck dinner in the middle of the nine o'clock plaza on Friday night for all the builders and our placers and uh, the rangers who are around and so forth to build community that way. Um, and then during the event, we're talking about ways that we can do things that will bring people between and amongst our camps. Uh, where, you know, we all operate at different times, but maybe there's something we do like a treasure hunt or a passport stamp or things that will just bring people to the different camps and show that we're all coordinated. And then we also have a, a group talking about how to coordinate and help each other during strike week. So there's barn raising, which is putting stuff up, and there's barn raising, taking things down, um, sharing equipment, sharing workers, um, and all trying to work together, all in the, uh, the goal of trying to create a unified community around us. And then last, again, it's tough because we don't know who's going to be near us or next to us, but we're trying to talk about ways that we can create some kind of really welcoming, unified theme with lighting or uh, frontage or just some one thing that would when someone came into nine o'clock plaza or near it they'd say oh this is that place I remember so something we can do we don't know what that is yet but we're talking about it awesome thanks for sharing those um, so we we got to start wrapping up here um, I just want to open it up for appreciations and anybody can just unmute and share something you're appreciating of this day or this session. And we're going to, there'll be a 
I'm still unmuted, so I'm just saying we love placers. Thank you. And I would I would definitely like to appreciate you, Simone, Black Beauty, Brad Cat, for all the time they have put it put into this to get us together to talk about a shared experience. Thank you. I want to thank Simone for making this virtual uh, breakout session as seamless as it could be. It was very easy and uh, little to no hiccups. So that's that's great. And and Marin as well for the technical support. Yeah, thank you, Marin. I also want to say thank you all for for putting this all together. Uh, it's great to have a forum where we can talk with each other and maybe we can do this more often, sort of more informally. If that works. Yay to that. Um, I just want to thank everyone who showed up today and asked these questions. It's been, I was really excited to get to kind of go back and forth with our community over what we've been working with. And I really appreciate your insight and everything you have to offer and thanks for bringing what you all bring to Black Rock City. I just want to say hi I'm Annie from uh, BW Bus Camp and the Leopard Lounge and Spa and we appreciate our placers so much and the CSS that came to visit, visit us last year it was a great interaction and thank you and thanks to everybody else who was asking questions and making comments. Thank you. Anybody else? Also, thanks to the machine for popping in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, with two minutes to go. Um, now it's time for break and then at 3 15 um, there's going to be another round of breakout sessions um, i can go through them real quick so we have um, another cultural direction setting actually two more cultural direction setting breakouts one the one around participation and convenience camps um, one on tickets for camps 2020 and beyond then there's an ask a placer session uh, getting sustainability laid at Burning Man and help that Burning Man just go, go sideways and putting the cult in acculturation. So these are our next breakout sessions. Um, all the best. Thank you all for coming and um, goodbye.